It's Mark from Whipple Training. The content on our channel here usually caters specifically either to Final Cut Pro editors or Resolve editors, but today I'm speaking to all of you. For Final Cut Pro editors, I've often said that one of the best plugins you can get is Motion. Well, another great plugin for Final Cut Pro editors is the free version of DaVinci Resolve. That's because it complements Final Cut Pro and Motion's feature sets with great media management, color grading, and visual effects tools. And if you're a Resolve editor, I bet there's a bunch of you out there who have not yet discovered the power of the Fusion page. So we've just released a brand new tutorial called Fusion 101, and it's designed for editors using any NLE to very quickly do useful things in the Fusion page without mastering nodal compositing. It's on sale for a limited time. Check out the link below. Today on Backbreak Studio, I'm going to show you how fast and easy that process can be. Let's dive in. Okay, I'm going to assume some of you have never used Resolve, so we're going to start from scratch here. I've launched Resolve. I'm in the project manager that comes up by default. You'll see an untitled project. It's selected. You can double click it or click open here to open that project. And by default, you may be on the cut page. I'm going to go over to the edit page. And the first thing I'm going to do is import my media. So with the media pool open, which you can open and close by clicking here, under the file menu, you can choose import and import media. It should look like a familiar shortcut if you use Final Cut Pro. Navigate to the shot that you want, select it, and open it. This is important. In Resolve, you've got a specific frame rate for the project. And in this case, we really want our clip to match the project frame rate. So let's click Change. It'll make the tracking more accurate. I'll select that clip. From the Edit menu, we've got a variety of edit options that you may be familiar with in other NLEs. I'll choose a pen to end of timeline. This clip is actually a series of shots. And I just want this shot right here Use my left arrow key back to where I want it to start, right there. You can either trim by dragging, or let's go to the end of this one shot right there, or I can use shift right bracket to trim the out point, much like you might do with option right bracket in Final Cut. Great, so our clip's ready. Doesn't matter where it is in the timeline. Playhead just needs to be somewhere over it, and now we'll go to the Fusion page. Here we're in the Fusion page. By the way, I'm using a three button mouse with a scroll wheel in the middle. You don't have to do that. There's keyboard shortcuts you can use, but I'm just clicking in the middle of the scroll wheel to pan around in the node editor down here. We've got two viewers up top. If you only see one, you can click right here to toggle between one and two viewers. We've got a media in node and a media out node. This is kind of like our starting and ending. Our media in node isn't loaded. That's why it's blank underneath here. There's these three dots. You may say two dots on your machine. The reason I have three is because I have an external monitor connected. But I'm just going to tap one, which will cause a little white dot to appear there in the first slot. And we've loaded that into the first viewer. The media out node is already loaded into the second viewer here. And we can adjust the size between those. So this is our starting of our shot and our ending of our shot. And obviously, they're the same because we haven't done anything. We've got a play range here. These yellow hash marks indicate the edit points in the timeline, the starting and ending points. We do have handles, uh, as we just saw on the edit page. And now we want to add our tracker. So I'm going to select the media in one node so that anything I do will be attached after it. I'm going to go to the Effects tab. And here we have tools, which are also known as nodes in Fusion. And they're specific to the Fusion page. We also have the open effects that you may already be familiar with if you used Resolve's color or edit pages before. I'm going to go down to the tracking section and I want to add a planar tracker. So I'll click it and it gets added to our node tree here. I'll close the effects tab. Now, if you added this and you found it didn't get added to the node tree because you hadn't selected the media on one node, it might have come in something like this where it's not attached. Just hold the shift key down and, and drag over it. When it changes color, it'll attach. So we want to select something to track. I want to add some text to this area here. A couple tips on getting a good track. First of all, if you have some lens distortion, you can remove that first by adding a lens distortion node before doing the tracking. And then you can remove 
that removing by adding the lens distortion back in afterwards, but we're not going to do that here. Second, you really want a large area, something that's not being occluded by anything. And although you could mask those occlusions, which is a little beyond what we're going to do here, but it's pretty easy to create a little mask and feed it into this blue note here that says ignore this area for the tracking. And ideally, you want something facing the camera as much as possible. This is a little bit problematic because it's really on quite an oblique angle. And there is a pole there that could get in our way, but we're going to work around that. And I'm going to start, usually I want to start with the areas the biggest, and it doesn't change size much here, but I'm going to start at the beginning here because this pole's here and I want to make sure my tracking area doesn't interfere with the pole. So all I'm going to do is click to create a little area that I want to track in. It doesn't have to be the same area where your object's going to go exactly. So I've created the area, I've closed it, and now I want to track. So in the inspector, we've got all these different options here. The tracker is deep. I'm just going to focus on that at the top level stuff to quickly get in and out of Resolve to do this. So our operation mode is set to a track. My tracker is set to a point tracker. You can also use a hybrid, which we'll look at in a minute. And the key here is you need to set your reference frame. Since we've drew this on this first frame here, which is actually frame number 120, we're going to click set, which will set that at 120. And now we can track. There's a lot of controls here. I'm just going to track forward right here to track through. It happens very quickly. And you see it did a terrible job because it was a difficult one. I'm not giving you an easy one off the bat because you might not get a good track right away. So what we can do is let's, let's do this. Let's reset it, say OK, and try a hybrid point slash area and track that. The trick is this takes a little more processing power, which is not a big deal here. When you're using just the point tracker, it's able to ignore things that it thinks shouldn't belong in there. But the hybrid is going to track everything in the area, even stuff that may not be there. If there was a, some bugs walking by or a bird flying by or something, it would include that and mess you up. But it can create a better track. So we'll try that out. And still, it's pretty good. You can go through it. You see it's jumping. It's still not quite working. And the reason is that there's just not enough contrast here to really pick up some stuff to track on. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to select the media in one node because before the planar tracker, I'm going to increase the contrast to give it more to work with. Now, instead of going back to that effects tab, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut shift space bar, which brings up the tool picker. And I'm going to type CON for contrast. There's the contrast pop node. I'm going to hit return and it gets added before a planar tracker. Over in the inspector, I'm going to crank up this detail amount just so we see a lot of detail in there. You can also adjust the detail size and the threshold. You can just play with this to try to find a point where you've got a lot of detail. I'll decrease the softness. Something like that should really help out. So now I'm going to go back to my planar tracker and I'm going to reset the start. I'll say OK. Let's try just a point tracker this time and now track that. And that time we got a much better track. That seems pretty darn solid. So let's try working with that. You can always redo it later. I'm going to select this contrast pop node and I'm going to disable it by holding down Command or Control P so that we don't have to see that terrible looking image. But now we've got a decent track. You see a couple of these red things. Those are just being ignored. But we seem to have a decent track. So I want to now track some text into this. So what I'm going to do is click above here to deselect everything. And another way you can grab a node is using this little toolbar here. So we've got this little text node. It's called a text plus node. So I'm going to add it. Since I didn't have anything selected, it wasn't connected to anything, which is fine. I don't want it connected right now. I'm going to press 1 to load it into the first viewer. There's no text, but over here, what I'm going to do is type the last swim return of summer. And I'm not going to worry about the font or anything, but I'm just going to make this nice and big. And now I'm going to go back to my tracker. And currently, the tracker is set up for an operation of tracking. But now, that since the track is done, I'm going to change that to corner pin. So it will corner pin our text. So what we need to do is feed our text into this green input right here. So I'm just going to drag from this little gray output to the input. And now we see our text in there. It doesn't look right at all, but we'll select the planar tracker. I'm going to go to a single viewer now just to give us some more room. And I'm also going to drag down here. 
And now I just want to reposition this corner pinning to align to the perspective that we have on the ground here. So something like that. And obviously we have an issue with this pole. Deal with that in just a second. But there we have a nice track of our text. Fantastic. So what about this pole? Well, you could add a little mask that blocks it off for a little while. But I'm going to show you a little trick. Another way of dealing with this is I'm going to select that text node. I'm going to change the color. And I'd like it to be much more kind of red. I say it's end of summer, heading towards fall, something like that. I'll click OK to accept that. And now we still have the issue. But if I select the planar tracker and open the corner pin section, we have an apply mode, which you might know as a composite mode or blend node. And I'm going to change this to darker color. You could use darken, but darker color will make sure you have an accurate color. It will choose the darker of the two overlapping colors. So if I select that, we see the umbrella now and not the letter. And it looks like we've masked it without needing to create or animate a mask at all. And that's it. Very quickly, we've got a nice track. We've tracked our text in there. You could do the same thing with a graphic. You would just drag a graphic in and attach it to the same point. But now we want to get it out. OK, let's jump over to the Deliver page. There's our clip. We've got a range here. I want the range to be just this clip. So I'm going to use the same keyboard shortcut you can in Final Cut, which is the X key, which sets the range over the clip. And then we can give it a name. I'll call it Last Swim. And you can choose the format. Let's choose ProRes for this, QuickTime ProRes. And that's it. So let's now add this to the render queue. It'll ask us for a location. So I'll put it in my Resolve Renders right here. Click Save. It gets added to the render queue. And I'll click Render All. That's done. So now if I go to my Finder and go to that folder, there is a clip we just looked at. I'll open it up. And there we've got our fantastic track. In the tutorial, You'll learn how anyone can seamlessly track text or graphic to a moving shot, cleanly remove objects from dynamic scenes, make existing objects appear in a shot, improve a shot by removing imperfections, replace lackluster skies, sandwich text between foreground and background objects, and realistically adhere graphics to warping surfaces. The first five lessons can be completed with the free version of DaVinci Resolve, and the last two lessons demonstrate some of the power and speed available to you with the studio version. All of the media and completed projects are included so you can follow along and check your work. The Fusion page can be intimidating, but we're here to empower you. You'll be shocked at how quickly you can add quality visual effects to your work. As always, if you like this content, Click below to subscribe. We'll see you next time here on MacBrace Studio.